Where is Bird? What do you want? How do you feel about rock? Well, it's a pretty good genre, but I'm more of a metal guy myself. Good enough. I give you rock. What do you mean, give? You'll find out. Ladies, gentlemen, and trainers of all ages, first and foremost, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays if you're watching this on the day that it goes up, of course. I hope you're all having a lovely time no matter how you're spending it. Festivities aside, I thought it might be a little bit fun today to go over the gifts given to us by Game Freak this year and rate them all based on my own opinions of them. Of course, this will be more than anything based on how they look, but if any of them have particularly notable personality quirks that I enjoy, then it definitely has an effect. In any case, put simply, today I will be going over my own personal tier list of every single new Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet, the over 100 of them. And this is opinion based, so you know, if you disagree, feel free to have a go at me in the comments. Without further ado then, let's dive right on into the D tier. There are pretty much no Pokemon introduced this generation that I straight up dislike, but these are the ones that I do like the least of the new ones. Starting off then, we have Squawk Ability, all the way at the right side of the tier, meaning, well, I, I just think it's pretty much the worst one really. My opinion on the exact worst wavers from day to day, but this is just not an interesting Pokemon to me. It is a bird, and it is unique because of a tuft of hair on its face. whoop de doo Yes, it has other colored forms, but I'm just not really impressed. After that, we have Bombardier. I just don't think it looks good. A stork that drops things on people is at least an interesting concept, but I just really don't like it visually. Feel free to disagree, but that's why. Watril and Kilowattril are next. I think they are more interesting than the previous two birds, but in the end, they are just birds with cool yellow lines on them. The name is fun as at least. Then comes Spidops. I know some people like that Spidops is a pretty good rendition of an ogre spider as a Pokemon, but again, I just don't like the way that it looks or the way that it moves. It looks like a spinning top, but it doesn't spin around on its end, and it just looks incredibly blocky. Then we have Flittle and Espothra, with Espothra being slightly better than Flittle to me. I don't think either of these Pokemon look good, really. The first form is okay, but sort of meaningless as it barely even has a form to it. And then Espothra is just an ostrich, which I like, but they gave funky colors to it and didn't do anything else unique. Palmy, Pomo, and Palmot. I just don't see the point. They are clearly a Pikachu clone, which is a type of Pokemon I generally don't like, as, well, Pikachu already exists and is great. The middle form of the evolution is entirely pointless. It doesn't look meaningfully different from the final form, but I just don't particularly like any of them. Then we move up to the C tier. I still don't really like any of these a massive amount, but I do think that they are all better than the D tier, and we started off with Iron Jugulus. I just think the sauce is lost with this one. Hydreigon is cool because it has three heads, but Iron Jugulus is a robot, so it could have three heads without being an abnormality of nature. It could be 20 feet tall, and it wouldn't be weird at all, so it just loses its cool factor to me. Sandy Shocks has very lightly grown on me when I look at it statically, but the way that it moves actually hurts me a little bit on the inside every single time. Gimme Ghoul and Goldengo are next. Gimme Ghoul isn't bad, but it is very much just sort of building expectations towards its evolution, which is Goldengo, who just looks like String Cheese. Yes, he's gold, and that's neat, but String Cheese nonetheless. After that is Veluza. I don't think this one is straight up bad, but it sort of looks like it's made of paper, yet lives in the water, and that confuses my brain. Flamingo isn't the worst at all, but it isn't great either. A Flamingo Pokemon, and I love Flamingo, so I should like it, but it just isn't quite creative enough for me, with its only real uniqueness being the coiled up neck. Then Claude Sire, it's not bad. I don't dislike big blob Pokemon, but there are just a ton of Pokemon in this game that I have much nicer things to say about than it's not bad. The Dunsparce is funny, but that's about it. I enjoy that they gave it an evolution, and that just adds more segments, but there just isn't much to this one. Finizen is decent, but at the end of the day, realistically, it's just a dolphin. I prefer Pokemon that have a bit more uniqueness or creativity in them, which is why I absolutely adore Palafin, who I will wax lyrical on when we reach his tier. Then we have Tinkatink. This version of this Pokemon is just not particularly interesting. It's just a pink blob holding a rock. Of course, what it evolves to is incredible, and I will get to that later, but the base form is just sort of meh to me. Finally, for the C tier, then, is Great Tusk. I just don't find him overly interesting. He's just a Don fan whose tusks are bigger and he's got some red bits. Up in the B tier then, we start with Brute Bonnet. I like mushrooms. I like mushroom Pokemon. I like the way that it's covered in fungal growth, but the fact that it's adorned with giant Pokeballs just sort of bothers me. It's, it's like seeing blatant advertising in a movie, you know? Then we have Mastiff and Babastiff. I do really like this Pokemon. It's in the B tier, which is pretty much average, but I think the average for Scarlet and Violet is a little bit higher of a bar than it is in most other Pokemon games, even. The Pokemon is neat, but not 
not overly special outside of the story that it gets with Arvin. Then we have Varum and Revavroom. I thought I'd like this Pokemon more when I first saw it. It's neat for sure, but I was a bit disappointed that it doesn't have a third form that is just a straight up car like the Team Star members use. For a giraffe, I think is just fun. The name is fun, the look is fun, like a snuggly giraffe rig in a hoodie, and I think giraffe rig deserved an evolution as well. After that is Tarunshula. I just think it's way better than Spidops to me. It's just a cute little spider with a ball of silk for its main section of body. Followed by Cyclozar. This Pokemon is neat, but not overly special, and it is heavily overshadowed by the fact that our legendaries are just cooler, more special versions of it. Then we have Glamette and Glamora. These Pokemon are quite cool. I like the way that they look. They could be better, they could be worse. I just don't really have much to say here. Lechonk and the Oinkalones. Lechonk is great, just a chonky pig who always looked like it's crying with a silly name. The Oinkalones are all right, but the female version is clearly the superior form of this Pokemon, in my opinion. I only wish it was chonkier to stick with the theme of its base version, though. Then comes Skeledurge. I'm sort of 50 50 on him. He's not ugly, but he could have been way better, too, given that both of his prevolutions, which I'll talk about later. He himself, though, is just too blocky, for lack of a more descriptive term. After that is Wiglet and Wugtrio. They are silly, they are fun, they aren't overly pleasing to me, but I enjoy that they are in the game. Then we have Flora Gatto and Meowscarada. I will talk about Sprigatito later, but these forms are just sort of eh to me. I would have much preferred it if it stayed on all fours like a proper cat, of course, but that said, what it did turn into is pretty decent looking as well. Next up are Nimble and low kicks. This one is cool looking, like a mech ninja hybrid with a cricket, but I just think there are better Pokemon this generation than this one. Then comes Tadbulb. This one is just really cute. I really enjoy the light bulb with a tail design. It's silly, but it's fun, and I like that. After that is Knacklestack. This, I think, is the worst of this evolutionary line. It isn't necessarily bad, but if I'm calling out Skeletors for being blocky, then how can I not call this one out as well? Then moving up to the A tier, which are ones that I think actually are pretty above average, we start off with Garganackle. His blockiness actually leads to something. He still looks like he's straight out of Minecraft, but I enjoy the shapes. It is more satisfying to look at, absolutely. Then comes Ting Lu. It's a stag with a bull on its head for its antlers. You can take it as a positive statement. You can take that as a negative statement. It's a bit of both, to be honest with you. It's unique, and I don't just like it in general, uh, but I like it the least of the treasures of Rune Legendaries, for sure. Iron Moth is alright, basically just Volcarona, but made of metal. I enjoy the metal Pokemon, but this one is my least favorite out of those. Roaring Moon, again, is quite neat. I sort of prefer regular Salamence myself, but I think this one has some neat design notes and does just look pretty good in general. After that is Chi Yu. Yeah, it's sort of just a fish, but I really like its color scheme. I think it's a fire type fish, it's interesting, and it just looks good to me. Then we have Iron Thorns. I like Tyranitar. I like this Pokemon just slightly more than Tyranitar. It's just a robot dinosaur. What's not to enjoy here? Screamtail, I just like the haircut of and the little fangs. It's essentially just a badass little version of Jigglypuff, and I can really dig that. Next up, Bridgebax, Arctobax, and Baxcalibur. This whole evolutionary line is really fun, and I do enjoy it, but I also think that there was a bit more that could have come from it. I like the idea of them, and I like the concepts, but they could have been just a touch better executed to me, because I could easily see Baxcalibur being one of my favorites if it was done a little bit differently. Then we have Caps a Kid. Just a cute little dude, doesn't give much of a anything away when it comes to its evolution, which we'll talk about in a bit. There's not much to it, but definitely not bad, even it's its own right. After that is Toad School. My leg has grown back! This might as well be a regional tentacool, but it is a full-on different species, technically, as far as the game is concerned, and I do really like it. It's just a little mushroom that runs around on spindly little legs. It's fun. Fluttermane is a really enjoyable paradox Pokemon, one that I quite like better than its original version. It's not anything in particular, I just think the design as a whole looks quite good. Then come Dolive and Arboliva. These two parts of this evolutionary line are pretty good. I enjoy them both. I like how this Pokemon just slowly grows into a full-on olive tree, and it looks Looks pretty. Then come Tatsugiri and Don Dozo. Yes, they are separate Pokemon, but you can't really talk about one without including the other. By themselves, they are just sort of alright, cool but not overly impressive, but it's the fact that they combine into one super powered Pokemon that really just tickles me the right way. After that is Orthworm. He just has a silly little face. He has arms that extend and retract from the sides to punch things, which is funny. He's not overly complex, but he's unique and I do enjoy him. Then come Quaxwell and Quaquavel. I like this the most 
of any of the starter evolutionary chains, but I sort of think that in a weird way, the weakest part of this gen's new Pokemon are the fully evolved starters. They aren't bad by any means, but they aren't good enough for me to actively want to have them in my full-time party, which is a shame, especially compared to the starters of most generations. Chien Pao, the third one of the treasures of Rune, is just a cool noodly saber-toothed tiger with swords for tusks, and I like that design. Simple as that. Rounding off the A tier then is King Gambit. I like that Bisharp got an evolution, and is a really cool one to me too. He just sits around on his incredibly long hair and acts like a commander of the samurai. Moving on up to our S tier then, let's start off with Koridon and Maridon. The legendaries both look good, but my personal preferences put Koridon just slightly below Maridon. They look equally good to me, visually speaking, for different reasons most of the time, but I just really prefer how Maridon works in travel mode, properly using its wheels like a motorcycle. Then we have Iron Valiant. It just looks badass. I like the color scheme, I like the fact that its arm blades can connect into one big Darth Maul style blade. It's just well designed. After that, then, is Iron Bundle. Delibird as a Pokemon is okay, but this is just awesome to me. I love its animations, the way that certain body parts will just pop off of it at random during its reactions to things. It's just a really fun Pokemon. Scovelin I really enjoy as well, a two-headed pepper Pokemon with fire and grass typing, which is a really nice mix, just conceptually as well. Then we have Bramblin and Bramblegast. I know a bunch of people will probably disagree with me on this one, but I love the idea of a ghostly tumbleweed Pokemon, and I enjoy seeing it roll around following you. Slitherwing is great. It's Volcarona, but with way less emphasis on the wings, so it instead becomes a fighting type, and that's just fun. Fido and Dash Bun are pretty incredible to me. I know, I know, but I like dogs, okay? And dogs made of pastries are just a really fun concept to me, and I think it was executed quite well too, with Fido looking unbaked and Dash Bun looking like the final product. Then we have Shrudel and Grafii. I just, I love these yellow guys. The tongues hanging out, the little evil smiles, they're just out to have fun and they look good doing it too. Then comes Knackly, the first member of its evolution in your chain, and I think it looks the best too. It's just a fun little rock snail, I find it quite cute, and I am happy that it exists. After that is Smoliv, and the reasoning is quite similar. It is just super cute to me, I like its happy face, it's a good Pokemon. Then we have Fuecoco and Crocolore. These are just happy little dumb crocodile boys. They look like they have no brain inside, and it just makes them even better for me. Crocolore is essentially just Fuecoco with a hat, and so of course I like that a lot too. Next up is Sprigatito. It's just a cat. It's a cute, happy, fun-loving cat. Who can say no to that? I love cats. After that is Charcadet. It's a fun prevolution to what is to come in both games. Just a little knight dude running around with a multicolored flame plume. Then we have Armor Rouge, who takes Charcadet and increases the armor tenfold and gets full on gauntlet armor cannons that are awesome. This Pokemon is just badass, no doubt about it. But slightly better, in my opinion, is Seraledge. Its dual blade arms made of ghostly flame just really hit me the right way. I love the aesthetic of both of them, but this one just slightly more, as I also prefer the color scheme personally. After that come Tandemouse and Mousehold. First up, fantastic names, absolutely perfect names, but I just love the idea of this Pokemon, a Pokemon that is just a group that grows as it evolves, and then the population bomb move that it has as a representation of that is, is hilarious as well. Then we move on to the final tier, S+, and at the very bottom of this one is Tinkatuff. This is when I start to really like this Pokemon. It's just a pink lady with a small hammer, and as someone who likes both pink and hammers, this speaks to me. Iron Treads is just a beautiful creature. I love that it moves by coiling its trunk and just essentially becomes a big wheelie ball. I love its LED face, it's just fantastic. Satoddle and Satitan are also incredible to me. I love whales, and these are just land whales with an extremely pleasing color scheme. Satoddle looks stupidly happy, which I adore, and Satitan just seems like it's, you know, having a good time just being around and existing. Cloth. Oh, Cloth. I love Cloth. It's just a giant derpy crab. There isn't much else to say about it, but I love crabs and I love derpy looking things, so how could I not adore Cloth? Then comes Palafin, and of course this one is absolutely fantastic. A dolphin who when switched out and back into combat, it turns into a superhero like Clark Kent in a phone booth. It's just such a great concept and it looks fantastic visually as well. Then we have Grievard and Houndstone. I like dogs and I like ghost Pokemon, so a ghost dog speaks to me just intrinsically. But Grievard with his little candle head is really cute and Houndstone just reminds me of a cartoon rendition of a metalhead and I adore 
adore it completely. After that is Wo Chien, and this Pokemon is just awesome. I love snails, and this is one of the coolest snails I have ever seen made as a video game creature. Every part of it just amazes me, and I have no negatives to attribute to it. Then we have Quaxly, my favorite starter. It's a duck with a pompadour. I can't have anything against that in the slightest. It's cute, it's fun, it's just the right amount of silly, and I love it. Toad Scroll is incredible as well. I love mushroom-based Pokemon as a concept, and I think this one is excellently done. Its color scheme is great, and it just looks great to me as a whole. Then we have Relor and Rabska. A dung beetle Pokemon is just funny in so many ways. The concept of that being its whole existence within this wild universe is really silly, and then it evolves into one of the craziest, coolest psychic entities that we've ever seen, with lore that implies that the Pokemon itself of Rabska is the ball, the orb, and that the beetle is just a corpse hanging off ornamentally. I love that. Then comes Iron Hands. This is hands down, no pun intended, my favorite of the Paradox Pokemon. I love the floating hands, the way that it moves and even sleeps in a fun way, slotting its hands into its shoulder blades and powering down the lighting. Annihilate is an absolutely incredible Pokemon too. I love the way that it looks from top to bottom. I love the concept. It's been said in previous games that Primeape are so angry that they can die from it. And well, here's a ghost Primeape evolution who is even angrier than the rest. I love it to bits. Then we have Belly Bolt. I know a lot of people disagree with me on this and that's fine, but I just, I love it. It is a giant derpy blob of a frog Pokemon. It has a big old smile and its nose and mouth even make a smiley emoji on its face just because why the hell not? The fact that its actual concept is it absorbs any damage it takes to power up its like attack is just so fitting to its blobby nature and it, it just makes it even more fun. And then finally, holding the crown of best Pokemon this generation, we have Tinkaton. I know I am not alone in this feeling. I have seen a ton of Tinkaton love out there, but as I said before, I love pink and I love hammers, so there is no world in which this isn't one of my favorite Pokemon, just of all time. It is incredible. And that's it, everyone. My full tier list of the over 100 new Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet. I hope you've enjoyed this, and of course, if you think there are any Pokemon that are in different tiers for yourself, feel free to fight for them in the comments down below. After all, these are just my own opinions. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>